Now as a small knife channel, like one who cusses a lot and don't have the knife hookups, it's hard to get the good shit before all the tactical knife channels, the bushcraft channels, the tabletop channels, the chicks reviewing knives channels, the self-defense knife channels, the guy who makes knife channels, the dude standing on his back porch talking to the camera for 20 minutes knife channels. And I have to buy my own stuff mostly. The bad joke cussing knife channels are bottom of the list. So I'm pretty sure Benchmade was thinking of me when they released the new 535 bug out. No previews months in advance at a knife show. No sponsored swag videos, just your usual unboxing videos, retailer promo videos, and first looks eating up all my clicks. I can fuck with that. Sorry, I got requests for cussing lately. The Benchmade 535 bug out isn't a revolutionary knife, but it's light AF, ain't too expensive, has a decent sized blade. And, oh, I guess that's the end of the sentence. So let's look at the dimensions because that will help you figure it out, like the overall length and the weight. Yep, translation, it don't have a liner. The blade size and the cutting edge. That handle size, that grip area, ain't too shabby, right? The spine thickness and that handle thickness. And finally, the tallness closed. So let's start with the blade. Benchmade was smart by making a drop point flat round satin finished blade out of S30V, mostly because they knew the internet thinks that 154CM found in the standard sold on Amazon griptillion is cheap garbage. I think they hated how quick and easy it sharpened up. And I guess they like paying more for S30V, which is fine. Don't worry, S30V, your day of reckoning is coming. Now, I have no problems with their S30V, other than the fact that it shot my paw. It does seem a bit harder to sharpen than the 154CM, but I guess that's fine. You'll notice mine is the 609 out of 1000 limited first edition runs, so I guess I'll take my prize now, right? What do I win? Oh, another knife I'll occasionally use. The blade is deployed by beautiful electric thumb studs, unless you hate the color blue. And someone on my Instagram was like, man, too bad it's blue. So there's one guy. It has a quick snap in place and has phosphor bronze washers on either side of the pivot. Whew. Good thing they're not nylon or whatever the hell they're made out of. As far as blade centering, it's that perfectly off center that Benchmade is known for. I adjust slightly not because it's not accurate, because it's not really something I pay a whole lot of attention to unless it's rubbing or it messes with the action. And it ain't here, so just letting you perfectionists know they're the same old Benchmade you've grown to love complaining about. The axis lock is sort of stiffer than my others. While it deploys fast-ish, the blade doesn't fall nicely like my 940s or on my Griptilian, and it isn't as fun to fidget with. It's a bit hard to flick closed one-handed too. You're like, oh, like a gonzo. Shh. I don't review those. Guys, who you must you must be thinking of someone else. Okay, but you do have to have a wrist flick. Wrist flick, wrist flick. You can also pull the um, axis lock back and flick it open that way, you know? The handle is a decent size. It fits my hand well on the grivery, to me, which feels slightly more like a sandy FRN. Maybe it is an FRN. I don't know. Somebody will correct me. But it feels like an FRN. Gives some texture. I would probably prefer some G10, but that's just me. I'm sure they'll release a limited version with G10 that's $50 more soon. The back is open back with some blue standoffs or spacers. There is that small partial liner that serves mainly as an anchor point for the blade pivot and the lock. If you have owned a 940 or 941 or 940 it's very similar to that. It helps anchor the screws. The knife handle doesn't feel super hollow and plasticky. Sorry for the technical term. Somebody asked me about that. Uh, I don't have the mini griptillion to compare it to. So I can't say for sure if it feels like that, but it feels like a solid knife to me because of the grid space scallops on the back. Anyway, blade retention when closed is nice. I can fling it open one-handed if I fling it hard enough, but it's really hard. It shouldn't open in your pocket. It shouldn't. The clip. The clip is swappable to the right or left side. Tip up only. It's a deep carry and medium tight. It's not super tight, but it ain't quite as springy as my Spyderco Endura or Delica. Those are my favorite pocket clips, and I don't really care about the paint rubbing off, which I guess it may rub off on this one too. P3 
people look for different things out of a clip. I like deep carry, but I like the medium springiness more, something that won't rip fabrics. This one is just a tad tighter than I like, but I think it'll loosen up with a little bit of use. It's not overly tight, I'm just saying if I'm being a nitpicker. All right, let's do some comparisons to give context to the bug out. The 535 has been carefully considered. For example, all right, boys, let's keep this thing above $100. Okay, okay, yeah, Got right, it, got right, it, right, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. But giving the knife a usable handle and a blade size while keeping it ultra light. It has one of those best size to weight ratios of any knife, and it doesn't feel like it's too small. That said, let's look at the Going Gear exclusive 940-1701, which is very similar to the 941, with key differences, though. The 535 is a bit lighter, like half an ounce, but unless you're a gram counter or just have less money overall to spend, the 535 will not make you give up that knife. 2.4 ounces is still very, very light, and the 940-1701 has a longer cutting edge, a slightly longer handle, and deploys and closes much more smoothly. I don't own the 940, but I would assume it closes pretty close to the 941, and that knife isn't a whole lot more expensive than this one. The 535 is still noticeably lighter in the hand. So let's look at that Griptilian. Sorry, I don't own the mini grip. Benchmade could always send me a free one though, so that's always there. They just started following me on Instagram. This now feels like a more substantial knife. It deploys and closes faster, has a thicker handle, and a longer blade. That said, I have never thought the Griptilian with its jimping was the most comfortable knife to hold in hard use. I prefer stuff like the Endura, which, you know, was my favorite knife. I reviewed all those knives, so you can go back and watch them. The 551 has more areas that could be considered hot spots, but it is cheaper and there's more to the knife, like more materials and it's a more complicated knife, I would assume, than this, but it's actually cheaper. Got to keep those MSRPs up, right, Benchmade? Okay, how about the Spyderco Delica? Since a knife is about $65 now, it seems an apt comparison. The 535 is a step up from that knife. Uh, it's lighter, has a longer blade. Now the handles, like on the Delica here, are a very similar size. The Delica forehandle curves a bit more. Some handles curve and some don't, but that's okay. The Delica is a lockback, so translated, it's slower deploying and uses a technology that's harder to patent. But that's what the hole is for. All right, let's bling it up and go with the 765, which is very similar in size to the 535, but it's heavier and it has nice sharp points near the pivot, like should be on a pocket knife. It has a slightly smaller cutting edge and it's like 300 bucks. The 765 deploys much smoother and faster than the 535. So I guess the money you spend on that one is for the heavy titanium and bowler, and I guess the deployment. In real world use, the bug out feels like a much more practical knife. So let's beat on it and wrap it up. Let's start off at first base with some regular old spine wax, then buy it dinner, and then get to the heavy stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Imagine a creepy wink here. Not that you should baton with it, but some people have expressed concerns on my Instagram that the knife ain't durable. Let's call batoning probably the most abusive knife should hypothetically endure, but really shouldn't. It's a folding knife, I know. I'm just saying that because of all the guys who commented over on Serious Knife Channel Nick Shabazz's after my Lion Steel review about how you really shouldn't baton with a folder. Got it. Anyway, yeah, you shouldn't. But this is YouTube and not real life. And after the beating and all the wood flying and all the negative comments, the knife had no additional blade play, loose screws, unlike myself, and the edge was still hair shaving sharp, and the lock didn't fail once. Not once. I suspect that sometime in the near past, Benchmade made their axis lock stronger, because in some of my older tests, my Griptilian lock would fail during this section, and it had. And I've seen some spine wax on Benchmade's channel recently, so, um, again, my old one didn't hold up to it, but the newer ones that I have tested seem to hold up to spine wax a lot better. The bug out is meant to be an ultimate weight to size ratio knife. Is that a thing? One of the lightest weight knives you can buy without sacrificing the length of the handle and the blade. I reviewed the Kershaw Fraction earlier this month, and that's my only other sub two ounce knife. Although the bug out is a larger proportion knife, and I feel like that's better because you can hold it easier. Benchmade is marketing this knife as a blade for gram counting backpackers, and I think that's a good market. It's not me, but it's a good market. They seem to have really thought about the theme for this blade. Extremely light, but without sacrificing those things that make large blades more useful. I can appreciate that. That said, 
about the only thing this knife does better than my 940 1701 or 941 is that it weighs less and is cheaper. I don't really know what I get out of a 1.8 ish ounce knife that I don't get out of a 2.5 ish ounce knife with a larger blade and better deployment. I don't know, maybe it's a little more blade heavy and the balance is a little more closer to the pivot than most other knives since the handle on this weighs next to nothing. So if you like this review, subscribe, click the bell below to get notifications the exact second my videos drop. Follow me on Instagram, Benchmade Did, where I show you upcoming previews of garbage I'm about to review. Thanks to the guy on Benchmade's forums for risking his posting power and giving everyone a heads up that this was on eBay the day it was released. Thank you for watching.